Hello, thank you for joining me. Today I'm at Waitrose in Rickmansworth. Just been to get my coffee. I've come here on the way to a miniature railway in Hertfordshire. So Rickmansworth is in Hertfordshire, but as you can see, it's served by the Metropolitan Line. And we're going to Watford now. There is a train once a day from here to Watford, but it's at five in the morning. So um, unfortunately we can't get that. I thought it'd be a bit of a long wait at Watford. So what I'm gonna do, I've got to go to Watford via Moor Park. So I've got to go all the way down all these steps to Rickmansworth Station where I shall get the train to Moor Park and then for Moor Park I shall um, get the train on the Watford branch and we shall arrive at Watford Met Station and then um, we shall walk to Cashbury Park so just got to the bottom of all these steps this, well, this is one of my favourite waitrose though this one because it's built on the roof of the station car park there's not many there's some waitrose obviously where you can see trains from. Um, as you can see, it's a station park, and then the waitrose car park is on top. And there's a, another Metropolitan Line train just going out. So I'm going to walk about 100 yards that way to Rickmansworth Station and um, get the train. So we're now on the Metropolitan Line train, the second Metropolitan Line train. I changed at Moor Park and I've jumped now onto a Watford train. We just call it Croxley. There's a bit, I'm gonna try and show you out the window. It's one of my favorite sections of the underground where we go over a viaduct over the Grand Union Canal. And it's also around here where if it ever happens, it's not looking so likely at the moment, a few years ago it was, that they'd extend this line to Watford Junction. It did leave in doubt what would happen to this stub into Watford Met. It probably would have been close, but it could have been reused. So the line would go off about here somewhere about where those bushes are, but look, yeah, to go about here, I think. But if you look any second now, I promise the trees will end and we're going to get a really nice view of the Grand Union Canal. And just over there is the old Croxley Green Station, which closed, I think it was in about 1996. I do remember as a child seeing a train on it about once. So here is the, that's the Grand Union Canal, that's the marina. And um, very soon we shall be arriving at Watford Met Station. So Watford Met Station is a bit unusual because it doesn't really serve Watford Town Centre at all. It's it's a fair walk. I have done it because if you remember that video I made when I did get the parliamentary train at five in the morning from um, Rickmansworth to Watford, I got on at Ch uh, Chalfont Latimer. Um, I then walked to Watford Junction Station and got a train up north. It was um, it's a fair walk, so today we're not actually going to go to the town centre, we're going to leave the station and we're going to take the, a left and head down Cashiobro Park the Avenue into Cashiobro Park itself. You can see there's a few extra sidings here. So if this had closed, they might have used it as um, some sidings for stapling trains, but then there was also talk of having maybe a train every half an hour still serving this part of Watford just because people in this area of Watford are so used to having a train service if they suddenly took it away by extending it to Watford Junction this side of Watford would actually lose out so it'd be nice to think they would extend it to Watford Junction but keep this as well but time will tell if and when that ever happens. I've also done steam on this line which I'm quite pleased about they, when they did steam on the Met um, a few years ago they ran steam from here to Chesham so that that was really nice to think I have actually you know departed this station on a steam train. I don't know if that will ever happen again now because the signalling has been upgraded. Possibly Sarah Siddons will come up here. So you can see there's a train stabled over there in one of the stabling sidings and there's also another one stabled in that stabling siding. So we are now going to get off the train and we're going to um, leave the big trains and go and find the little trains at Cassiobre Park. I did also do a video here once, a few years ago. Once the A-stock trains had stopped running, they were still running one as a RAT, rail adhesion train, and it was stabled in that siding there. 
but I seem to think that's been scrapped now because they've now got a district line, an ex-district line D-stock train as a rat. So it's a sad thought. I don't think we'll ever see an A-stock train running again. There's, I think, one or two carriages preserved. Um, but at least, um, you know, Sarah Siddons is still going. Seems a lot of long platform, this. At least I did get in right down the end of the train. Uh, so now I've got a bit of a walk to Cashier Bray Park, not too far. I just wanted to show you the Cashier Bray Park housing estate, which this station more serves rather than serves Watford itself. So we go up here, up towards the ticket barriers, and we shall then exit the station. So for those of you who don't know where we are on the map, we're here at Watford. We came from Rickmansworth, so there's a curve that's not shown on the map. And the train runs once every day at five in the morning. Um, so today I've been to Moor Park, I didn't show you all of it, but I changed to Moor Park and bounced back. There's our train sitting there, the train we just came on. And I'm gonna go up and out the station. Interestingly, this station isn't step free. Now I wonder if the reason for that is because they possibly thought it might close and it never did, so they never actually did the investment in making it step free. So out we go. Out of Watford Met Station. Yeah. As we come out here, just go across the road so you can see the station. We're in the Cashbury Park housing estate. So behind me is Watford Station. I've got to walk this way. This is Cashbury Park Avenue, I believe. Um, down to Cashbury Park, so I'm going to now head on down there next bit you'll see I'll be in the park itself. So, here we are, we're in Cashbury Park. There's a lovely cedar tree behind us. Cashbury Park was originally a country estate. The country house that was here was finished in 1556, but unfortunately it was demolished in 1927, and it would have been somewhere over there. I believe it's now in the middle of a housing estate, so there's, oh, that sounds promising. Steam as well. Wasn't expecting steam today, so we're gonna have a good time at the miniature railway, um, but just a bit more about the park. So it was once a country estate, the house was demolished um, in 1927. The estate was owned by the Earl of Essex, and then in about 1909, so before the house was demolished, it was passed on to the council, the estate, and it became Watford's main park. And I think the house sadly fell into disrepair. Perhaps wasn't seen to be something so special at the time. So sadly, it was demolished. Um, so what you have now is a very pleasant park. It's, you know, it's quite extensive. I used to come here a lot as a child. In fact, here is where I had my first ever um, steam haulage. It was a locomotive called Trevithick. Um, she's now down at the Royal Victoria Railway in Southampton, which I haven't been to. Um, but it looks like I'm gonna get some steam here today, so I'm very pleased about that. When I last came, this, this cafe wasn't here. There's been lots of investment here since I last came. They've really modernized the place. None of that was there. I don't know if you can see over there, but I can just see a puff of smoke from the steam train. So let's make our way down there. This is the main Grand Avenue. If you follow this all the way up, you'll come to Watford Town Centre. And there used to be some, there used to be a gatehouse, which unfortunately was demolished in the 70s. And I believe there's a group out there today who um, are hoping to recreate that gatehouse. So best of luck to them. I'd love to see that happen. So I used to come here a lot as a child. Uh, I used to go on the train a lot. Like I said, Trevific was my first ever steam loco for haulage. Um, my first Stanley Gage loco was Met Number One at Quainton. Somewhere else we should revisit because there's a miniature railway there. I remember it's probably not the exact ones, but there's paddling pools here. No one's using them today. But I used to go in that a lot as a child. It was kind of like a really exciting outing. You'd come and go swimming, and then we'd go on the train, we'd play in the park. There's also the canal. We'll perhaps go and have a look at the canal afterwards, but like I said, um, let's go and see the most important thing here the miniature railway. Now, I can already see there's um, a diesel boat come out and I can smell the steam. So let's go and uh, let's go and have our ride. There's a third train coming. See that boat? They've got pitted as well. Perhaps there's a goal or something. It's a lot going on today. Oh, look, there goes the steam boat. Let's go. 
watch the train arrive and then we'll have our trip. So it looks like, despite the weather, we've um, come on quite a good day. Look at this double headed train. So they've got one's called Conway Castle. I didn't quite catch the name of the other one. I've definitely had one of them for Hornwich. And let's just see the steam locos over there. There we go. So let's hope for, hopefully we'll get a trip on the steam train. That'd be really cool. Well, that's a nice surprise. I think what I better do is go and buy a ticket because it's starting to rain, but I really want to be on that steam hall train. So um, let's go and ride the Watford Minutes Railway.
So we've just had a very exciting trip on the Watford Miniature Railway. What I'm going to do now is tell you a bit about the history of the railway because it's, it's grown and developed over the years. So it actually started in 1959, but the station you see today wasn't the original station. This was added in about 1982. So the railway goes off round there up to the level crossing. If we wander up there, I'll show you the original station. There's actually a disused station here, um, which um, I've always missed until today, but just there, they've got a nice little display in that tent telling you the history. So, I, And they've got some maps of how the railway developed. This, by the way, is the River Gate, which runs through Cashebury Park. Um, we'll have a look at that later because it's quite a nice weir, if I remember rightly. So that's the River Gade. So the newest part of the railway is this spur that runs down here. Um, we're going to have to wait now for the train to pass, but that's a nice thing to have to wait for, so I don't mind. Um, well, the gates are open close, so we'll watch the train go past. It's Pilgrim again, and then um, I'll tell you a little bit more about the history of the railway. So she's just pulling out of the station right now. I'll let you watch her go by. So as Pilgrim takes another group of passengers for a trip around the Watford Minutes Railway System, I'm going to show you a bit more about the railway. So as I said, this is the newest part. This was added in about 1981, 1982. Locomotive Pilgrim, she used to run at Nebworth, which is one of those miniature railways I never made it to, so I'm a bit disappointed. So when this railway first opened in 1959, the station was here. Now if you look, the actual gate is still there, which I think is quite cool, the gate and the platform would have been just there and it ran from here I think round there and it ended up there and then later on it was made a full circle and then once it had been made a full circle the extension to the station was added and also the balloon loop so this is talks about Mitch railways what layout they are this is classed as a balloon so it goes all the way around there and then this is like the balloon this bit here this so I'll show you in a minute, there's a junction and it does a loop, comes back to itself. I think we'll probably see the train. So the train's gone round there, the engine sheds are over there. When we were on the train we saw they were steaming up Mari. She's another steam loco I remember riding behind as a child. Steam train's coming now. So let's watch Pilgrim go past again. So you can see there's a set point. So Pilgrim's going to go onto the loop. She'll go right round there and come back down here. So I'll let you watch it. Do just that. So what would have happened is, I believe the station would have been there, the railway went round, not this track, but to over there, and then in the 60s, the second, track here was added to make it a loop and then eventually it became as I said a balloon and then in the 80s the spur down to the railway station was added so what we'll do we'll just see Pilgrim one more time come off the balloon loop so as I said this is the end of the balloon loop and then she'll go back that way the way she came back to the railway station and then um, we'll, we'll finish by going to have a look at the River Gade again and the Grand Union Canal just to show you a bit more of what there is in Cassie Road Park. As I said, it was once a country estate, but I'm not going to go and show you the site of the house because there really is nothing particularly exciting to see. So let's just see one more time. We'll see Pilgrim Pass. So um, I think the Mitch Rail originally ended just there when it was named to end. And then this is like the second it from which comes.
Holmway Castle's banking the train. I think whether it's because um, the weather's not great and it's the um, infamous leaves on the line time of year, they've decided to give Pilgrim that bit of support so she's not working too hard. Um, I don't mind because I've got two locos for haulage, where I've actually already had a Conway Castle for haulage. So this is quite a pleasant part of the park here. This is the bit I wanted to finish the video on, taking you over this really quite pleasant bridge over the river gauge. It's always fascinating here because there's like a weir and it comes off the canal. I think there's a section of the river gauge that's also the Grand Union Canal. So as a child, when I used to come here quite a lot, I used to sort of, you know, we'd, we'd go on the miniature railway, we'd come and see the river, we'd usually walk up to the canal and I just used to find this such a fascinating place and I always wanted to walk into the woods beyond Cashbury Park but I always had um, had sisters, I've got three younger sisters who are always a bit little and they, they only really wanted to go in the paddling pool, they didn't want to go for a walk so I've only about once actually walked beyond there but it's somewhere, you know, I've always enjoyed coming as a child and as I said I had my first steam loco for haulage here so that's why, you know, it's quite a special place for me here. I do believe there's possibly a water mill there. I might be wrong in saying that, but that's what I think. And here is the weir on the river gate. So one more thing to see, the locks on the Grand Union Canal, which is just here. So this part of the canal is actually fed by the river gate, and up there the canal and the gate are all one. But bridge number 167, this must be, I suppose it's known as Castlebury Park Lock, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so here we are, we started at Waitrose by the Metropolitan Railway. We've had a lot of fun exploring the park, going on the Metro Railway. We're finished here on the oldest mode of transport at Castlebury Park, the Grand Union Canal. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.